Hello, you are most welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to real impartation moment on Tuesday night anatomy with Daniel Open. Today's section, I quickly run with you the cavernous sinus. Remember that the cavernous sinus is one of the dural venous sinuses, yes, that we have in the head region helping to, of course, you know, drain, you know, the head region of venous blood, okay? So that is one thing that we know. Now, one thing is that get to know that these cavernous sinuses, they are bilateral, you know, they are paired. Yes, located on either side of the body of the sphenoid, okay? So we look at those important relations as well regarding this cavernous sinus. Yes, as I indicated to you, it is one of the dural venous sinuses, Yes, in future yeah, video that I'll be doing, I'll show you the complete picture of how the, the direction of this, I mean, blood, uh, I mean, drain, okay, out of, you know, the cranial cavity. And so, without much ado, let's set the ball rolling, looking at this kind of, I mean, cardinal sinus. So there we are, the schematic representation of what we call the cardinal sinus. Now, I mean, to just to orient you, what will happen is that in the middle area over here, we are going to have the body of the sphenoid or, uh, around this area. Okay? Yes, I mean, that's one thing I have to know. And located on either side, okay, of the body of the sphenoid, I'm having the left and right, what we call, I mean, cardinal sinuses. So these are the cardinal sinuses that we have. Okay? Now, one thing that I want you to know is that you have to know the incoming channels or some we call the tributaries of what we call the cardinal sinus. Okay, where is the cardinal sinus, you know, getting its blood from? Okay, so it is receiving blood from three main sources. Yes, namely, it is coming from the orbit. It is coming from, of course, the brain. And it's also becoming from what we call the meninges. Okay, so these are the three areas that the, I mean, cardinal sinus is receiving blood from. And as part of your exam, you are supposed to know all these incoming channels, okay? So if you talk about the orbit, yes, it is receiving blood from, of course, what we call superior ophthalmic vein. Yes, ophthalmic, you know, has to do with the orbit, so superior ophthalmic vein. Not only that, even inferior ophthalmic vein, okay, the one what is shown over here. Yes, so those ones that I've highlighted in yellow, yes, represent what we call that kind of incoming channels coming from the orbit. So namely, we have superior ophthalmic vein, and of course, inferior ophthalmic vein. Then there's another one which may not always be present. Well, I mean, invariably you will see it, but not always. We call it central vein of the retina. So these are the three main sources of blood getting into what we call the cardinal sinus from the orbit. Orbit. Okay, so then the next one, it will be coming from what you call the brain. Okay, so those ones I've highlighted in blue will be coming from the brain. So coming from the brain, we have what you call superficial middle cerebral vein. So get to know a superficial middle cerebral vein is coming from the, I mean, the brain. Then of course, you also have inferior cerebral vein. So these are the tributaries coming from, of course, the brain. Tributaries of the cardinal sinus coming from the brain. Okay, so that is, I mean, what you have to know. Now the next one will be coming from the meninges. Now meninges are highlighted in green. Okay, so those ones coming from the meninges, yes, one of them is known as what you call, I mean, sphenoparietal sinus. So we get to know a sphenoparietal sinus, okay, which of course we see it as a content of what you call the superior, I mean, orbital fascia, okay, I mean, sphenoparietal sinus. And not only that, we also have the next one, which is what we call the middle meningeal sinus, or some you call middle, I mean, meningeal vein. Okay, so these are what you call the tributaries. Of the cardinal sinus coming from what you call the meninges okay so that is i mean what you have to know of course one thing is that there's that kind of communication between the left and right you know cardinal sinuses by way of what we call anterior and posterior okay so let's say here is the posterior one and there's the anterior one so anterior and posterior what you call enter cardinal sinuses yes seven as a communicating channel between these left and right cardinal sinuses okay so that is i mean what you have to know but now, after looking at this one, then the next one that we have to also appreciate is that here's the blood. We want to drain it out of the cranial cavity. So from the cardinal sinus, where is the blood going? So that is why you have to know what you call the drainage channels or what you call the outgoing channels of the cardinal sinus. And guys, there are two outgoing channels that you have to know. 
well i'll add a third one and i'll explain why we'll be having a third one now the first one you know this one this bone over here we are trying to show this bone over here is the petrous part of the temporal bone so this is the petrous part of the temporal bone that you see here where the cancer is okay and therefore there's this kind of i mean uh, sinus running on top okay and that one will be called superior petrosal sinus because this is the pet I mean, petrous part of temporal bone and the sinus is running downwards okay draining blood from what you call the cavernous sinus is known as what you call inferior petrosal sinus because the landmark over here is the petrous temporal bone okay so that is what we see now the interesting thing that you have to know is that the superior okay petrosal sinus okay is draining the blood into what you call the transverse sinus please get to know that that superior petrosal sinus is draining into what you call transverse sinus now when i take you through the entire course of this i mean drug venous sinuses yes i will explain all these things to you then what will happen is that the inferior petrosal sinus okay drains or joins what you call the sigmoid sinus okay there's a sigmoid sinus and they, of course they will form what you call internal jugular vein internal jugular vein which will of course you know i mean get down there and of course form what you call the inferior vena cava so that superior vena cava actually so that is what i want you to actually know so it is coming all the way yes formation so there could be a question for you that how is internal jugular vein formed and internal jugular vein is formed from what you call the confluence of what you call inferior petrosal sinus and of course sigmoid sinus okay and then they will go through what we call the jugular foramen okay so this is the general picture which i want you to know these are what you call the outgoing channels so the main outgoing channels are highlighted in red that is the superior petrosal sinus and of course inferior petrosal sinus but i told you that there will be a third one which will i'll add because that one can serve as both incoming and outgoing channel of what we call the I mean the cavernous sinus and that one is what we call the superior ophthalmic vein superior ophthalmic vein now the interesting thing is that why should superior ophthalmic vein be both i mean considered as an incoming or a tributary as well as an outgoing or a drainage channel the reason is simple the reason is that the superior ophthalmic vein yes it is an emissary vein now guys emissary veins are those veins which are valveless without valves okay so it means that blood can enter and blood can go out okay through either direction okay so that is why superior ophthalmic vein yes if you see a question and then they ask you which of these you know forms part of the drainage or what you call the outgoing channels of what you call the cardinal sinus yes this one if it is there will be an option if these ones are not there yes you have to choose superior ophthalmic vein because this is an emissary vein both an incoming and of course an outgoing you know channel so these are what I want you to know. Now, the next thing that we have to know is also to look at the important relations of this cardinal sinus. Yes, we have to know that one for your examination. Yes, you may be required to know all these ones. And of course, if you look at these important relations, then one thing that we have to know is that if you look at the medial aspect, let's look at the medial relations of this cardinal sinus. Okay, now this is one, I mean, corona is taking a coronal section or frontal section, okay, of the cranial cavity so that we can see the cardinal sinus, okay. Then it means that this is the midline, okay. So anything closer to the midline is medial. And it's now away from the midline is lateral. Yes, of course, the above will be the roof and then below will be the floor or the inferior boundary, okay. So what will happen is that if you look at the medial relation, there's the cardinal sinus where, I'm, I mean, the cancer is running the bluish nature okay that is the cardinal sinus so the media relations of what we call the cardinal sinus okay one thing that we find okay we find this hypophysis now if you talk about hypophysis we are talking about the pituitary gland okay so the pituitary gland yes is related to it medially okay yes not only that even what we call the cella tessica and we talk about cella tessica we are talking about yes coming from the body of the sphenoid and not only that, we also have these, I mean, sphenoidal air, air cells, okay, air sinus, okay, sphenoidal sinus, okay, is also present in the medial wall. So these are the three important media relations of what we call the cardinal sinus. We are having the hypophysis, the pituitary gland. We are having the cella tessica, yes, which is part of the body of the sphenoid. 
then you also have what you call sphenoidal air sinus okay forming what you call the medial relations of what we call the uh, the cavernous sinus now how about the lateral relations which is also yes in a way you can say it is within it but very close to the lateral aspect and they are related to some important nerves so the lateral relations we have what we call the third nerve so from upwards to downwards we have the third nerve and the third nerve you know that it is known as oculomotor nerve then if i come below it you have the fourth nerve and the fourth nerve is of course the trochlear nerve then even below that one i will have what you call the first division of what you call the trigeminal nerve being what you call the ophthalmic nerve ophthalmic nerve now you see that in all literature they will add what you call the maxillary nerve but of course i mean currently it is shown that this maxillary nerve doesn't form part of i mean the lateral relation of the cavernous sinus well so if you see it in some of these questions you may choose it if it is there but one thing that you have to know is that uh, this one is no longer considered to be in the lateral relation of the cardinal sinus because it's been found to be uh, actually outside okay but of course if you find it anywhere yes i mean i appreciate that kind of variation that you may find okay so these are those ones which are forming what we call the lateral relations of the cardinal sinus well another thing that we also add to it is what we call i mean uh what we call onkus okay so onkus is also added to lateral relation of what we call yes as part of the brain onkus is also considered to be in the lateral relation of what we call the cavernous sinus apart from these nerves so it's a three four and then v1 okay of what we call the trigeminal nerve then the next one is how about the floor or the inferior boundary so the floor what will happen is that it's related to the lacerated foramen okay of the base of the skull and that is the foramen lacerum okay so foramen lacerum okay forms is in what we call the floor of what we call the cavernous sinus okay foramen lacerum then how about the roof or the superior you know boundary so the roof one thing that we find is that it is related to what we call internal carotid artery so the roof is related to internal carotid artery and not only that even the optic chiasma optic chiasma is related to it in the roof okay optic chiasma now how about those things which are present inside so those things which are present inside yes we add what we call the cyst nerve the cyst nerve is what we call the abducens nerve so the abducens nerve yes is found inside actually and then of course not only that even at the same time internal carotid artery yes because internal carotid artery yes it will be a, it will be a content inside it then it will also go through that kind of siphon okay carotid siphon okay to get into the i mean so that its pulsation okay supplying the brain will go down okay that is why we see it in both as an inside content okay and also forming part of the roof because it makes that kind of bend over there okay so that is i mean what we have to know so this corona section can help us know what i call the medial relations medial relations being of course the hypophysis pituitary gland talk about cellar testicle talk about sphenoidal air sinus we talk about the floor that's foramen lacerum talk about the lateral wall we talk about oculomotor nerve you know talk about trochlear nerve and we talk about the ophthalmic branch of what we call the trigeminal nerve then of course, I mean, talking about the roof, we talk about internal carotid artery, optic asthma, and the inside content, yes, abducens nerve, and of course, internal carotid artery again. Now, how about the anterior and posterior relations? Now, for the anterior and posterior relations, now, if I do the extent of the entire drivenous sinus, you see it. Okay, so this where we have the cellar testica, okay, around here, the body of the sphenoid. Then I said on either side, we are going to have this cavernous sinus okay and this cardinal sinus yes i told you that I'm receiving those kind of things from the i mean the orbit from the meninges from the brain okay these are the areas but what i'm interested in showing is that it means that the anterior extent will be related to what we call i mean superior orbital fascia okay and then the posterior relation now does the petrous temporal bone then it means that posterior relations it will be related to what we call the apex of what we call the petrous part of the temporal bone petrous part of the temporal bone all right i'm very grateful for your time this evening i hope you find this video helpful yes we'll go through the entire course of this dura venous sinus so that i can have a complete picture i'm very grateful for your time this evening have a good night and may good lord richly bless you amen